Lake sturgeon historically, before European settlement of the Great Lakes region, was one of the most abundant species in the Great Lakes. And by the early 1900s had been essentially decimated by overharvest and dam construction and pollution and such until about 1997 when the DNR went into Black Lake and did another population assessment. And we discovered during that 22 year period from 75 to 97 that the population had declined by about 66%. And at that point we knew we had to do something to start addressing the, the scarcity of lake sturgeon, the fact that they're on the threatened species list and we need to do something to try and help them recover. The work here started in 2002. The questions were really pretty simple. Um, very limited amount of information was available on the, the ecology of the animals. You know, what's the population size? That was a big question. Um, how often do the animals spawn? How successful is the reproduction here? Are the fish naturally recruiting? We thought the answer was no, but we really didn't have an idea of mechanism, right? What was the impediments to natural recruitment uh, in this population? So the crew that's in the river behind me, they are catching the adult sturgeon that are up here in the, spawn, in the spawning run. Uh, today is May 7th. Um, this is the time of the year when Lake Sturgeon come up to the Upper Black River spawning sites. And for the last 20 years, we've had a crew in, in snorkel and wetsuits and waders with big nets, um, chasing the fish around, catching them, tagging them. And this is the way that we determine the, the abundance of the adults in the lake. We've trained 15 graduate students. We've had nearly 100 technicians working on various aspects of this project. And Every project and every year we learn a little bit more and we're able to ask more informed questions. And over time, I think uh, Michigan State's involvement partnering with the Michigan Department of Natural Resources, I think we have some answers. And I think that some of the next steps will be how to implement what the research has found. Sturgeon for Tomorrow started in 1999 as a nonprofit and our overarching mission is to assist fisheries managers in the rehabilitation of lake sturgeon. We recruit roughly 400, 450 people who contribute about 6,000, 7,000 hours um, in the course of six weeks to guard the sturgeon, to just be visible and low key to deter um, illegal activity. People out watching what other people are doing and then reporting that to our Report All Poaching hotline, 1-800-292-7800, is a very important piece that helps us protect the natural resources. We've made some tremendous strides in sturgeon management here. All signs are positive and again today's more of a celebration of our partners and our collaboration than anything else. And it seems like a long time but in the life of a sturgeon we're just getting started. For at least the tribe we identify the sturgeon restoration is a multi-generational uh, restoration effort. So the fish that we stock today aren't going to spawn for another 25 years maybe and you know, for them to then feel that effect of it, you know, you're probably talking beyond my time working here and, you know, it's going to be the kids that we bring in for the classroom. This is probably the best studied sturgeon population internationally of any species anywhere, um, simply because we've had the funding and because this is such a unique uh, population. The population spawns in one place right below us right here. And then we have a facility here, a research facility, where we can do really reductionist experiments, decomposing very complicated aspects of the species life history into different parts that we can, uh, we can use to answer questions.